Good evening. Hello. Good morning. <laughs> good morning. <laughs> I got it wrong. You know why I said good evening? It's because it's dark. I thought it was the evening. <laughs> Bonjour in French. That's what we say for the morning. Bonjour. It's good to be here and uh, to be back, especially in Abilene, to see all my friends and especially my brother from my other mother, <laughs> Danny Stephenson. <laughs> Good to see many of you who came to help in Haiti, and I want to thank Pastor Tim for having me, and uh, Pastor, Pastor Tim has been very kind and very helpful, and we never forget the two trips he made to Haiti, uh, one of the trips during, during which they helped to build one of the churches that we show in that video, the church in Onaville. And we are very thankful to you because all that we have done in Haiti, we would have never been able to do it without you. Because as you know, God used his church, God used his people to do ministry works, to save others, to plant churches, to do mission works. It is because God used you. God used your hand, your feet, and you were willing to be God's vessel, instruments to help. And you, you partner with our ministry in Haiti. That's how we were able to do and we will continue to do the ministry. And thank you so very much for the building that you have done for the church in Onaville. Thank you, Pastor Tim, and for the team that came with you and who help and thank to all of you. And I also want to thank you again for your monthly support to our ministries in Haiti. And lastly, and very important, is your very generous support uh, for the children, Christmas children offering and on December. And for this, I want to show a very quick, very quick slideshow at the end. And you will see it that will show, give you an idea of the toy distributions that we give to those very needy children. And God will bless you for that. Thank you, thank you for what you did and for your help, for your partnership. As you know, we cannot ask for help from the world. God's work is supported and done by God's people. And so I thank you for standing on our side to do the ministry in Haiti. And this is good for us to be back here to report to you, just like Paul and Barnabas did when they were sent by the church to go and plant churches. And Paul and Barnabas returned to report, to let the church know what God has done in their lives. And so this video, uh, in a sense, showed to you, give you an idea of what we have done, what we have implanted in Haiti. Thank you. And may God bless you over and over again. And when I returned to Haiti, I remember it was in 2000, December 2009, for our next term then, for my, my wife and I, when we returned to Haiti. And in 2010, 10 on J January 12th, so about 12 days after we returned to Haiti, all our plans changed, an earthquake hit Haiti. That earthquake happened while I was sitting in the church office preparing for Bible study. It was on, on a Wednesday, and uh, I suddenly heard a terrible noise. Uh, usually, uh, there, there are U United Nations helicopters which fly near our church building, and I thought it was one of them, the noise that I heard. And I said to my wife, uh, they are flying their helicopters too close to the building. And, and, and let me s step outside to see how close this helicopter is. And, and suddenly, the building moved and, and, and moved so fast that it threw me back to my seat. And I said, what is that? Because it was for the first time in my life I've been for an earthquake. And uh, I'm not from California, so I don't know about earthquake too much. <laughs> and... And, and so I, 
I did not understand what it was. But I said in my, in my mind, whatever it is, I'm not going to survive. Because, because the building is moving front and back and sometimes up and down. It's like when you're riding a horse and you know when you're riding a horse that does not want you to ride it and so the horse will give you a hard time and that's how I feel like it's, it's moving fast. And, and, and you know in Haiti they built with concrete, with cement, with cylinder blocks and especially in Port-au-Prince and when I realized the ceiling is in concrete, the walls made of concrete and I said, and, and, and I saw the ceiling detaching from the wall and moving up and down. And I knew in my heart that I was going to die. And, and, and I did not understand what it is. And, and, and I realized in a few seconds that I, I said, well, I am going to see Jesus face to face. And I made a prayer. And I, I think I shared that with, with a journalist from MSNBC that interviewed me after the earthquake. And I said exactly the same thing I'm saying today. That I said... God, I know I'm going to meet Jesus in a few seconds. When that happens, do not let uh, the concrete, the building, when it falls, do not let me suffer too much. Because I, I realize it's going to collapse and it's going to crush me completely. And I said, do not let me suffer. Made it happen very quick. And it stopped. I walk outside of the building. I pull my wife. I said, let's go. My wife was like, freeze, you don't know what to do. I said, we got to get out of this place. And when it stopped, when, when, we, when, when I opened the door, I could not even see the outside. It was so dusty. It was like cloud, you know, dark cloud. It was very dusty. I was able to, to step out, to, to, walk, to walk down and step outside uh, because I knew my way very well. And, and I could have done it my, with my eyes closed because I could not see. I pulled my wife, and when we get outside, I, it was dusty. I could see people walking, but, I could, but not very well. They, were, they had blood all over them saying so-and-so died. I did not know what it was. And suddenly there was another shake, a, a, a small shake that happened again. And I said, ooh, what is that? And it's, I felt like the ground is, is not still. And, some, and, and then I said, God, what it is, is it? And I said to, my, to myself, maybe it is the end of the world. Because I could not explain it. Because at first I thought it was a nightmare. It was like a nightmare. Because imagine a few seconds I was sitting, preparing for Bible study, and the next second this thing happened. And... Then when this happened again, I said, it might be the end of the world. I said, I, I see, that's what it is. But if it is the end of the world, what am I doing here? <laughs> and, 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 and I said, well, well, I must have my theology wrong. <laughs> because I, I, got, I, get, I must be saved. Maybe in Bible college, they didn't get it right to me. <laughs> and you see, because I know in the rapture, I was not supposed to be there. And beloved, you cannot imagine how many dead bodies my wife and I, we have seen after that. Miles of dead body and children, piles. People who could not, who had part of their bodies, I mean, under a building and crying for help and another one would come with a knife to cut. And to cut, if you have your arms under that building, and someone will come and cut to free you. Because at that point, the international community did not come yet to Haiti. It was too early. Haitian has to help each other. And it was terrible. And to see so many children, so many dead bodies, 300,000 people passed away in one second. It takes one second for everything to change. My life changed completely. I realized on that moment, we are nothing. The, the nice clothes, 
I mean, sometimes we are picky about this thing, it's too dirty, all this thing. In that moment, I feel, I realize how fragile is life, how it can change at any minute for, and sometimes for the worse. And I, and I had one of the young men who, was, who got saved into my ministry and who was very close to me, was the pastor of a church. He was, while he was teaching in a, in, a build, in, in a school, the building collapsed and smashed him completely. His, he was flat and his eyes popped out of his head. It, it was terrible. And, and, I, and I said, God, all these things happened. How come my wife and I, we made it? So many people dead in one day. Why us? Because we are no better than them. Good people and bad people die. Christian and unbelievers died in that earthquake. And several Americans. There was an American group who came uh, to, to, to help. And I remember they, they, they also did not make it in, the, in one big hotel in Haiti that collapsed. I said, why? Then... I begin to understand that God saved my wife and I for a reason, so we can minister. So we can minister in a new way. And this is how, out of these terrible things, an orphanage was born. Many people came to help. Many groups from Texas, Danny and others, and many of you came after that to help us in Haiti. But out of this tragedy, beloved, many people got saved. Thousand people got saved in the ministry. And an orphanage was born. Because we felt so many kids were orphaned in one day. And we have this orphanage where many kids come and to have a better life. And you help in your support to feed these children. Not only to feed them, but we have several of them, like one called Dada, one called Whistler, and Becky, who came, those kids came without the Lord, and they accepted Christ as their Savior. Not only they receive the bread of this life, but they receive the eternal bread, the, you know, the eternal life from Jesus Christ. And we understand that. And we understand something else also that, beloved, that the gospel, serving God, is not cheap. Sometimes we have to pay a price. We have to pay a cost. Sometimes we have to suffer. And I say sometimes, maybe I don't get it right. Very often we have to suffer. Because if, you see, through that sufferings, through that trials, through that earthquake, that was terrible. Many people who otherwise would have never got saved, became Christians, received eternal life. Not only that, but these children, they've been not only helped, but get saved. An orphanage was born. Something good happened out of this terrible thing. God works mysterious ways. And sometimes we have to go through the fire because you see that earthquake Turned my life upside down. Changed my life, but in a good way. And I was able to serve in a new way. Our ministry took a, a, a new turn. Nine churches were planted. More people were saved. An orphanage was born. More partners came among them, you as a church. And I understand, beloved, from that, that the gospel is not cheap. You see, the Bible said in the Gospel of John chapter 3, verse 16, a, a passage that everyone knows by heart, the children knows it, that God so loved the world that he gave. You see, the good news of the Gospel is that Christ came, died, and was resurrected. And his Gospel those said that all those who believe in Christ will have eternal life. But it has a price. Nothing is cheap in life. You may not pay the price, but somebody paid the price for you. Jesus Christ 
pay the price. And God so loved the world that he gave his only son. The gospel is not cheap. It cost God the death of his son, of, for his son to come and left his comfort zone where the angels worship him in heaven. He came and gave his life. It wasn't cheap. My life changed completely, but it wasn't done without me going to that fire. Sometimes it took for the believer to go through a fire to reach a new dimension in Christ. The gospel is not cheap. Not only that Christ paid the price, but the apostle Paul himself, in the Bible said Paul was called to suffer. When God called Paul on, on, on the Damascus road, God said to him that he is called to suffer for him. And Christ knows why. And the apostle Paul, the Bible said through, he went through a lot of suffering for the cause of Christ. And he said, if I live, it's no longer I that I live, it is Christ in me. In the book of Acts, Chapter 9, verse 15 and 16, the Bible said, But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is chosen, speaking of Paul, a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him all great things he must suffer for my name's sake. For my name's sake. The gospel is not cheap. Serving God is not cheap. It is something that you do by doing more than you usually do. My service in the ministry is not cheap. It must cost me something. Our service must not cheap. It must cost us something. I say I worship God before I return to Haiti. I, I, I talk about what, I'm, what I was going to do, but I never realized that I was going to go, through, to go through this fire. And it takes this fire to really give a new dimension in my life for me to understand better in my life to live is Christ and to serve him in a new way. The gospel is not cheap. You, we must do more than we usually do. Sometimes we need to go the extra way, to, to do extra things, to leave our comfort zone, just like Christ left his comfort zone in heaven to come and give his life for our salvation. The Bible said also in the book of Kings, remember the story of David, how David, when he decided that he, God, with, God sent a plague to Israel, because uh, of what David did. And so David, God said to David, he will, at the end, we stop the plague. And when finally God stopped the plague to the nation of Israel, that he sent to the nation, David wanted to give thanks to God for, for his mercy. And the Bible said that David went, he wanted to buy a piece of land so he will build an altar to give thanks to God. And when he went to that man, and the Bible said, when he went to that man to get the field so he can build the altar, the man wanted to give it to him. But David said, I will not offer anything to God that does not cost me anything. That is the right attitude. Our worship, our worship, our service to God must not be just a lip service. It, will, it must cost us something. Sometimes things must not go our way. You know, what we want to do, what we plan to do, we must allow God to change things. We must give ourselves to God in a way that we say to God, whatever you want me to do, that's what I'll do. Not your will, but not, not, not my will, but your will be done in my life. I remember somebody who said that security is not the absence of, de of danger. It is to be in the center of God's will. That is really the truth. Even though I was in danger, God saved my life. 
He saved my life because it, is, it was his will for me to continue the ministry in Haiti, to plant these churches, to, start, to establish this orphanage. So this morning, I want to thank God for what he has done in my life, through you and through others, and for the way that he kept me in the midst of the danger. Tonight, this morning, I want to say that to God, thank you. The fact that he, not only that he, he saved me, but he used me and my wife in Haiti for this goal, for this purpose. You see, serving God costs you something. It costs me some suffering. But you see, when you're doing what you like, when you're working and doing something you like to do, it's like you're not working. You see, even though things are tough, things were very tough, beloved, believe me, I enjoy it. Each life that is saved, each life that is changed, it brings so much joy into my heart. Those children whose life have been changed, those people who have been saved, even though things are tough, sometimes it is difficult on the mission field, but yet when you see lives change, when you see people getting saved, it is all joy. Let me close with this word of the Apostle Paul at the end of his life. Is what he said. And that will tell you to live for Christ, there is no better life. The, the small sacrifice that we make, it's, they are nothing for what you have in Christ. Here's what Paul said at the end of his life. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. This is the best way to finish your life. I remember they said uh, the gentleman who created Apple, at the end of his life, he felt like he missed many things. Even though he accomplished such a great thing, gave this computer to people who enjoyed them, yet he felt that he did not accomplish many things. If he has to redo it again, he would do it another way. But look at what Paul said. Even though he went through all these sufferings, Paul was beaten. He had many tough times in his life. But look at what he said at the end of his life. This is not a man who has fell. This is not a man who felt that his life was empty. He said, I fought the good fight. And I'm looking forward to the day where I will meet Christ. This is, what, this is the way to live. And this is the way to finish your life. With no regret. Nothing to take you back. I have fought the good fight. Even though it was tough. Even though he suffered. Even though he went through many trials. But many lives were saved by him. Beloved, the gospel that we have today is not cheap. Christ suffered, gave his life. Paul suffered. He was killed. He was not just lip service. He was killed. Peter suffered. He went into jail. He was killed. And church history tells us how many people were martyred, killed for the cause of Christ. The gospel we receive is not cheap. It's a gospel where people accepted to pay a price. Even today in Africa and in the Middle East, Christians are slaughtered. The gospel is not cheap. There is a price to pay. Yes, our salvation is free by grace. 
But in our service to Christ, we must accept to pay price. It's not all the time things must go our way. Sometimes we must do things when we don't have time, but do it still for Jesus Christ. Accept to make some sacrifice. Sometimes to be to lose some things, but to serve Christ. Sometimes accept to go in a place where you would never go, but to do it for Christ. Because you see, he left heaven for you and I. He came and accepted to die for you and I. Paul did the same. Peter did the same. It wasn't cheap. They all did the same. We must go on. We must do the same. And we must take a stand for Jesus Christ. Not just lip service, pay the price. Go through some trial, some sufferings, if it is his will, for his name's sake. Thank you. Thank you for giving to our ministry. Thank you for praying for our ministry. And thank you for all the sacrifice you make for him. He did the ultimate for you. Paul did it for you and I. And the gospel we receive was received through blood, through sacrifice, not just lip service, through sacrifice. We must pay the price. And David said, I will not offer anything to God that will cost me anything. No cheap service to God. Thank you. May God bless you. Now they're going to show to you a short a sl a slide uh, picture in a way to say thank you to you for the gift, your gift to our church for the children in Haiti. Thank you. God bless you again.